Rob's Child, no investment advice. Welcome to the show where we view financial markets through crystal ball gazing. Today is Thursday, September 12th, 2024. For those of you who are superstitious, tomorrow is Friday the 13th. But I wanted to start today's episode with talking about when will I sell treasury bonds? You know, I've been talking about in this show being about 55% of my own portfolio in treasury bonds. And it's a question like, well, when is it time to get out? When's the right time to sell treasury bonds? My answer on this is fairly simple. I'm simply going to see when uh, if home affordability reversion, if we get that, when home prices become more affordable, that would be when I might be selling treasury bonds. I think at that point, it would make sense to own other assets. Right now, the housing market is in a bubble, uh, a major bubble. You know, the housing bubble of uh, 2006, uh, the median household income to uh, home price ratio was around 6.8 and this graph only goes through May of 2024 I think it may be even higher than it is now it's actually higher than that at 7.16 so homes have never really been more expensive suggesting to me that rates will have to drop in order for people to be able to afford homes and you know the longer that rates are higher the longer that homes are unaffordable for people uh you know the stronger the reversion will be i believe uh on home prices or i mean the other way about it is for incomes to start really uh, skyrocketing here but i don't really see that happening in any of the data i think it's more likely right now that we'll have a housing crash i'd at least want to see it get down to around five and a half years uh before exiting a treasury bond position. Another metric I'll, I will be using to determine when to sell treasury bonds is the PE ratio of the S&P 500. Right now it's sitting around 30. So if we had a 30% correction in the S&P 500, it might, be, it might make sense at that point to sell T-bonds or at least maybe have a trailing stop loss uh, you know, start thinking about getting out at that point. PPI came out today. We're going to take a look at that. So here is the PPI. The PPI month over month came out at 0.2% core at 0.3% of the actual. Uh, you know, one notable thing I want to point out is the PPI year over year is now below 2%. Uh, that's including food and energy. This largely is because of the price of energy dropping recently, uh, while the core is still at 3.2%, which does not include the food and energy. Last main note of the day is next Wednesday is when we have the rate decision. It's when the market is expecting to cut. This is the point in the cycle when typically the market is right at the top and uh, the Fed has their first cut and things uh, pretty much fall over if you take a look at the charts. So when the this is the Fed funds rate. So this is what the Fed is charging for uh, basically overnight interest rates. And as you can see, every single time we, you know, we go up, we start the cuts, and then this gray bar, recession. We go up, we stay flat for a while, we cut, boom. Uh, the Great Recession. Even before 2020, believe it or not, we were cutting. We started a cutting cycle right before uh, the COVID dip. Some people think that that little recession there has is only because of the pandemic. It was already coming. Um, and the reason we didn't have a worse recession was because of extreme monetary policy and uh, fiscal stimulus. But you know, I and this is only the past few ones. It's it's happens many times before. You know, you have your your first cut recession, uh, flat cut recession. You know. So here we are on the right side of the of this sheet, and we haven't had our first cut yet. We've been going flat, 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 and we're the cut is literally next week on Wednesday. 
just another piece of the puzzle suggesting that the recession is pretty much here. Obligatory daily reminders, two-year, 10-year treasury yield curve was inverted for over two years. This hasn't happened since right before the Great Depression, suggesting that, well, we might be headed into another depression. The reversion just happened uh, on September 6th. When you get reversion in the two-year, 10-year, it pretty much spells that, yeah, it's time. We're, we're headed straight into it. We can see the storm coming. The SOM rule was also triggered, suggesting the unemployment rate is rising, has risen at an unsustainable pace, suggesting the recession is already here. The S&P 500 PE ratio is 29 right now without even having a major earnings contraction, meaning that it is very expensive, leading to my crystal ball reading that the market crash continues. I believe that the markets will get bearish here. They have every reason in the world to do so. You know, uh, Mr. Market is a crazy, crazy man, and he'll do things that are beyond our understanding. But my crystal ball says that this is what would make sense right now, at the very least. We'll see how it ends up playing out. My other main crystal ball rating the Fed is that the Fed will not cut fast enough to save the economy. There are participants out there saying that, you know, these cuts are going to light the market back on fire. We're going to head into more inflation. I don't think it's going to happen that way. I think because of the fiscal dominant situation, just like the rates being raised did not slow the economy as much as people expected, the same thing will be on the other side. When we start cutting, it won't save the economy. It won't lead to more inflation the way everyone is expecting. We'll start with the S&P 500 SPX. Obviously we had a pretty green day today. I did not expect this. I thought yesterday was like we got to get rid of bears and we'd probably turn back over the other way, but instead we went up by 0.75%. I still do believe that this head and shoulders top or double top is in play here uh, unless we close uh, on new time all new all-time highs the patterns look bearish to me same thing in the nasdaq the triple q's we had a pretty large green candle today but uh we're still within the confines of this pattern and shoulders top i believe that we will be going down from here i believe smh the semiconductors etf is a great uh you know, it's probably the best place to look at as far as where things are headed. There's so, just because there's so much money piled into, spe well, there's so much uh, speculative value pumped into this market that, you know, if it falls apart, it pretty much will take everything with it. This is kind of like the railroads in 1929 and the housing market in 2007. Um, this is just a bubble that's been waiting to pop and, uh, in my crystal ball, I see it still playing out this way. Again, the VIX futures term structure has the, the October contract still highly elevated, suggesting that the market is expecting major volatility coming into October. People are paying for protection in October because they're scared. The VIX itself is cooling off here. They, uh, they don't we're not seeing another uh, bank blow up yet, you know. From my perspective, again, it's just a matter of time. TLT, as you know, this is my biggest holding. I think this is one of the best. I think this is the best place to be, obviously. Why? Otherwise, why would I have 55% of my portfolio in it? We're finally seeing a little bit of uh, sideways motion here. I don't really know uh, in the short term if this is bullish or bearish. I don't really care. Again, I'm holding on to long treasury bonds until, like I said, the, the two keys here are for me, how home price reversion to, you know, a normal level, uh, or the S and P 500 getting to a somewhat normal valuation. You know, it's amazing how reversion can work when you have something that's clearly like way overvalued and compared to 
uh, the value of something else. You know, they'll 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 go towards each other. Uh, you know, part of this to understand too is that the the numbers these aren't not random numbers here. The PE ratio of twenty is a five percent return to companies, and when you have thirty year treasury bonds offering a guaranteed rate of four percent, it's like that it, it doesn't really make sense. If treasury bonds were only, 30 year treasury bonds were only yielding like half a percent, then maybe a PE ratio of 30 would make a little bit more sense at least. But having both of those things exist at the same time, they're in huge disagreement with each other and uh, something's gotta give. Uh, so that's how I see this whole picture. Credit spreads are still very tight. This is HYG, this is uh, junk bonds. I think that they are just way overly optimistic. I have no idea why uh, this market is not more scared here. I have puts on HYG and I expect them to do well. Again, like I explained in my last show, all it takes is for all rates to go up for the value of this to drop or and or for credit spreads to spread. And you know, if yields go up, it'll put higher pressure on companies making the credit spread spread anyway and it's just all roads lead to credit spreads spreading here it's there's not there's not a path where junk bonds can just keep going up uh, i i can't see that but i'm just the guy with a crystal ball While TLT itself it looks like it's moving sideways, TNX, one way of kind of seeing where longer rates are going, it's certainly not, this doesn't even look like it's really going sideways. It still looks like it, we're in a downward trajectory here. However, a more accurate view of yields for TLT being TYX, the 30 year yield does look like we're starting to go a little flat here. And that's all for my crystal ball from me and my crystal ball. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Rob's child.